Hi everybody, welcome back to Baldur's Gate 3. We're back at the Hag's Lair, where yesterday we just killed the Hag and also knocked out those guys. And they don't... Wait, 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 what did we do? We... Oh yeah, we took down their masks and in theory they should be able to get up and leave. In theory at least. Yeah. So that is that. So much for Auntie Ethel's tea house. Now, uh, well, in case you're wondering why Karlak is burning, that is because we gave her a soul coin, soul coin, for her coin slot, <laughs> which is a little bit weird if you think about it. Uh, yeah, doesn't matter. What is the next thing we're doing? I'm not sure, actually. I believe the next thing on our list, close by, is to confront Korga in the grove, because we have successfully been investigating her. And we should talk about that with people, including her. First thing though, first thing is we are going to camp because we need to refill our spell slots, our health, and probably talk to a lot of people because that's how things go here. Yeah. <sighs> Hi, oh, Gail. Hello, Gail. Someone is hungry. Before we talk to Gail, though, oh, look at this! All our spidey friends. I hope they stay with us after long rest. I want to keep them. They would be useful in the next one. Because I believe when we get to Korga, there's a fight, or maybe a fight? I'm not completely sure, but I'm going to expect a fight. By the way, just by the by, because I did it in the last one, I'm going to ask for this at the start of the video instead of the end. If you happen to like this video, please do click the like button and maybe even the bell button and the sub button and all the other buttons that are available to you. That would be very, very helpful. Thank you. Now, sir, are you hungry? My condition likes being ignored as little as I do. I must consume another artifact. And soon. No reason to get snappy. I've just sort of been busy with a hack. <laughs> Look at him being impatient. Here you go. There you go. What are we going to give you? Uh, all of this. I want to keep the guidance pendant just in case we don't have Shadowheart with us. No, this was what, yeah, we bunked those for him. The gloves of heroism are basically for paladins and we will never have a paladin in our group. So there you go. Yum. Thank you. You're welcome. Ouch. Good? Good gods. Uh -oh. I don't know what to make of this. Three artifacts is a positive glut of magic. Yet my hunger only grows. Listen, I need to speak to you, to all of you. It would be unconscionable of me to remain silent. Uh oh. Go on. Well, I definitely want to know. You're among fr friends? I don't know that. But, okay. Go ahead. I might just be about to remedy that. You have to know who I was. You have to know who I really am. What I am is a walking shadow of the promise I once held. And what one might call a wizard prodigy. Who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it. Much like a musician or a poet or a bard. such was my skill that it earned me the attention of the mother of magic herself the lady of mysteries the goddess mistra she revealed herself to me and she became my teacher in time she became my muse and later even my lover what are you telling me you made sweet sweet love to a goddess Telling me that? Oh, yes. We enjoyed each other's company. Body, mind, and soul. But even so, I desired more. You see, no matter how powerful a wizard we mortals can become, we never scratch more than the surface of the weave. Mistra keeps us in check. There are boundaries she doesn't let us cross. Yet, every time I was with her, I stood on the precipice, gazing into the wonders that lay beyond. 
I sought to cross her boundaries. Oof. You got power hungry. Don't you cross people's boundaries? Yeah, you thought you knew better than Mistra. That's not really the smart thing to do. Quite. I tried to convince her. I pouted. I pleaded. I swore my ambition was only to serve her better. She only smiled and told me to be contented. Inconceivable as it seems to me now, I shared a bed with a goddess. Yet I wasn't satisfied. So I sought to prove myself worthy to her instead. We come now to the crux of my folly. Shall I share the story behind it, or would you rather head straight to its sordid finale? Details, please. I'm, I'm a story kind of person. I'm a bard, you know? Everything. Tell me everything. Very well. Here goes. Once upon a very long time ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his history for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. And he almost managed, but not quite. His entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic that was unleashed that day was phenomenal. Roiling like the prime chaos that outdates creation. Even the weave itself could not withstand the onslaught. It fractured and shattered, and all magic was lost to the mortal realms. Until the day Mistra returned. She restored the weave, reuniting all its scattered shards. Or so I thought. Until, in the course of my studies, I learned of a book. A Netherese tome in which a piece of the fractured weave had been sealed beyond her reach. What if, I thought, what if, after all this time, I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? Oof. So to get this straight, Mistra is the wheel equals it the wheel, the weave, Mistra equals weave. The guy, the big bad guy basically exploded it and she puzzled herself back together. You found a tiny puzzle piece like, like a pinky toe and you wanted to bring her back her pinky toe. I'm guessing she didn't want her pinky toe back. I guess you ruled out flowers and chocolates altogether then. You know me. My gestures can never be grand enough. I was certain that this deed of raw power, draped in romance, would convince Mistra to take me by the hand and welcome me into her hitherto forbidden domains. Into her what? I was mistaken. I obtained the fabled book and took it into my study. As for what happened next... Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. Um... Please don't eat my hand. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in. Into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound and suddenly opened. Inside there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through and becomes part of you. And gods is it ever hungry. Can I get my hand back? I would like to keep it. How are you still alive? Thankfully, the moment I absorbed the fragment wasn't enough to kill me outright. It was only the beginning. Hand? Hand, please. Thank you. This netherese blight, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as I absorb traces of the weave from potent enough sources, it remains quiet. Were it ever to fully destabilize, however. Huh. Then you will die, I'm guessing. Rather worse, actually. I will erupt. 
Oh. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep. Oh. So, more than our camp, that's not really good. There are a few good options here. Um, like the obvious, I trusted you, should be told, told, blah, should told me right away. But honestly, did you ever think what would happen if the tadpole got the better of you? Because that's a valid question. If the tadpole took over, he would just explode, I'm guessing. Maybe the tadpole is even the reason for him not being able to feed the thing. Probably is. Every waking moment. Every dreaming moment, too. But there was no way out. All of this. It must feel like a betrayal. Say the word, and we'll part ways. No, 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 no. I just found a really nice stuff for you. You have to use that. No, 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 no. You stay. That is a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. You truly are a soul that steals my own. From all my new rallied heart, I thank you. I thank you all. I understand if you stand against me. I'm humbled if you stand with me. Either way, I will do my best not to let you down. No. I stand at a precipice. But if you do not give up hope, neither shall I. I'll fight. I'll resist as long as I can. Now. Even I am tired of the sound of my own voice. What? Let us venture forth. <laughs> Not quite, though. Uh, you know, I, I need approval from Karlak and from Shadowheart, so I'm, I have so much approval from you already. You know? Just a little bit longer. Okay. So, I believe that is that for his hunger, at least for the moment. Huh, and I'm guessing that everybody has something to say about that. But, let's see if he has more to say. How can I help? Hi. Oh, yes. If you ever feel the Netherese magic overtaking you, just, just, in, just in case, what will you do? If it should ever come to that, if I ever know I am no longer able to stop it, I will do anything I can to ensure no one but me pays for my mistakes. I will find the remotest place on the surface of Faerun, or perhaps far below in the depths of the Underdark. I will await that death alone. I promise I will not betray your trust. You kept me by your side despite the menace that I am. If worse comes to worst, I will be long gone before the curtain falls. That is so sad. Okay, but yeah, it's the safer option. Also, I was wondering about that mighty lord in his wizard tower with his big magic you told me about in your story. Ah, yes. Carsus. Carsus was perhaps the most powerful wizard that ever lived. The child who would be a god, the elves called him. And he tried. With a spell of his own devising, he endeavored to usurp in one fell swoop the power of the goddess of magic. Mistril, she was called then. Imagine what it must have felt like to be a god, to know yourself, to be untouchable, to be mistaken. As Carsus aimed his spell at her, she began to unravel, and with her, the entire weave. Too late did he realize what he had unleashed. It would have been the end of everything had not Mistral sacrificed herself. The goddess of magic is all magic. By dying, the entire weave was lost and the spell that challenged a god failed. It was the end of Mistral, the end of Carsus, and the end of an entire civilization. As the child who would be a god was turned to stone, his empire came crashing down around him. The floating cities of Netheril were no more. An event that came to be known as Carsus's folly. Very interesting. 
So at that moment in time, all magic was gone. For a spell, Mistral was reborn as Mistra. Upon her return, the weave returned with her. Now, so many centuries later, I try to follow in the footsteps of Carsis, not to destroy Mistra, but to prove my love for her. I try to control only a fraction of the magic that was unleashed that fateful day. I merely sought to return one tiny diamond to an imperfect crown. Gale's folly, one might call it. History, repetition. It's the way things go. Um, okay, nothing more to ask. I'm just going to leave you here to sulk, I'm guessing. Have fun. Will? Well met. Honestly, you have nothing, nothing to say. Nothing. Okay. Very well. Lazel. Speak. Nothing. Awkward. This bit of silence, I hope they cut that at some point. Hi. Yes, darling. What's going on? Okay, I don't think there is anything we can do at the moment. Except for sleep. Take a nap. So, what else can we do? Um. Um. Nobody seems to want to talk. Yeah. My feet can carry me. Okay. Okay. Then one thing I wanted to do, because we had that for a while but didn't really use it. Where are you? Necromancy of the. Hmm. Read. The book is locked tight with no visible keyhole. Only an oval recess in the cover's mouth. Yes, and we found a stone for that. Gimme. You try to examine the book, but the longer you stare, the more those piercing amethyst eyes draw you in. Curious. Why don't you take a closer look? I'll observe from back here. Please don't open the creepy book. <laughs> um. Mm, place the amethyst in the slot there. Oh, when we found it, didn't Astarion say something? That looks terribly heavy. Why don't you let me carry it for you? About wanting to have that. Um, hi. Yeah? He did! Look at that. Um, so in my last run, I gave it to Gale, obviously. Uh, why not give it to Astaria now? I'm honestly not sure what we get from that. I know we get spells from that, but I, I think I didn't really finish the quest. You know what? You take that, please. Oh, Gale disapproves, of course. Excellent. You don't know what he read, but it had an effect. His eyes are hungry, but pained. Well, quite the page turner. I'll get back to it when I have more time to focus. There you go. Twisted binding, what? Well, hello. Hello. Twisted binding. Oh, right, it's, um... Twisted binding. Connects, connects the relic and his owner. Okay, because he opened it, basically. No time to rest. Right, 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 right. So much for that. Let's go to bed. And this time we actually eat stuff. How about 26 potatoes? Nice. That sounds like really good meal. And two half-eaten apples. No, yum. Really good. Yum, yum. More weird textures. Okay. <laughs> Stuff is getting weird. <laughs> really weird. Mm-hmm. Okay. By the way, Maybe it'll oh, bring us anything to say on the book? Hello, my sweet. Hello. Nothing. Okay, fine. Then we should 
take a quick little look at our inventory. You know what? I want to test out all the potions right now. Why not? Quick save. There we go. Where are you? Here. Okay. Broken promise. What is it? Drink it. What is that? Strength is increased by two until the next long rest. Upon resting, strength is indefinitely reduced by one. That is so bad. That is so bad. Okay. We have quick saved. What is this? Butterflies in the stomach. Uh, Meant to recapture the fluttering thrill of first love. Okay. <laughs> Bleeding from the inside, suffers one to six piercing damage at the end of the turn. Okay, so love kills you. Oh, fine, fine. I guess we are kind of used to that. Faltering will. What is that? A sweet, intoxicating aroma hangs around this bottle. It reminds you of home. How does it kill me? Disadvantage on wisdom saving throws until rest. Yeah, faltering will. That's kind of boring, kind of. What else do we have? Heart of Stone. Fragments of malachite swirl at the bottom of this potion, coalescing and separating rhythmic. The? Rhythmically? I said how you say that? Probably. Drink! Heart of Stone. Resistant to poison damage until rest. You know what? That is actually one that I would like to keep. That doesn't seem too bad. Insanity's kiss. Something thrashes in this heavy gorge. Consumed by rage. I want to know. Whoa! <laughs> Hostile to all other creatures for the condi <laughs> conditions duration. Oh, please don't kill me. <laughs> la la la. Can I run away? Can you wait? Can you can you just knock me out? Can you please just knock me out? Knock her out. Come on. I said knock her out, man. Um, yeah, so much for that. Hi. Hi, guys. So this is number three. Uh, third time he killed me, sort of. Hmm, okay. Anyways. Anyways. Insanity's kiss. Don't drink that. Sell that. You know what? Drop it. Nobody should have that. Lost in time. Its seal is dry and cracked with age, yet the clear potion within bears no signs of spoilage. Eh. Armor cl class is reduced by two. Can't take reactions. Completely crappy. Okay. Lover's avarice. Avarice? Avarice. A rotten pungency undercuts this potion's otherwise pleasant aroma of roses and honey. Okay. Wisdom is indefinitely reduced by one. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> Missing pets. Thousands of little legs skitter inside this bottle, seeking an escape. And I'm going to drink that. Interesting. Interesting. Let's go. What's this? Illusionary spiders run up and down the creature's body, imposing disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls. Yum. Yum. By the way, our spiders are gone. Crap. It is really crappy. What else do we have? This one. Wilted dreams. Smells like a sleep potion turned sour. So, probably killed us, right? Yep. Something waits for the creature to sleep. Whoa! It takes 3 to 18 psychic damage during its next long rest. That is evil. That is absolutely evil. A mother's loathing. Didn't see that one before, okay. A hint of blood lingers around the stopper. It's enough to make your mouth, your mouth water. Uh, okay, you're not a vampire. Let's drink that. Gains bite until next long rest. Awesome! I want to keep that. Oh, I want to keep that. Okay, I want to keep two of those. Um, what, what was it? What was it? Heart of stone and mother's loathing. Okay, let me reload. Ha! Awesome. So, all of this, you know what we need? We need a pouch, some sort of pouch where we can collect stuff in. Um, we have anything like that? 
Can we put stuff in a camp supply sack? I don't guess we can. I want to them somewhere. No, can't go in this container. Okay. We need some sort of pouch. Open up. An extra pouch. Please. Give me. Give me what I want. Oh! Sparkle hands, camp supply sack. No pouches in camp, only buckets. And lots of mugwort. Okay. Fine. Fine, fine, fine. We have done all of that stuff. We should be going good to go to the grove. So let's go there. Yeah, Emerald Grove environment. Whoop! Maybe one in the grove has a pouch. So I can sort things better. I know, very German of me. Very, very German. It's fine though. It's efficient. You know? And again, no party banter. Why are you guys not talking? Do you don't... Don't you like each other? Please, be talky. We have to also sell stuff, like a lot of stuff. A lot of, a lot of stuff. Is that blood? And I want to try something out. Never mind. Before I end the episode, I want to try something out. I made a mistake in the last time we entered the, the uh, Druid's Sanctuary thingy. Hi. You need anything else? Mm-hmm, lots of stuff. Of course, of but please remember, you're not the only one in need. Mostly your gold, please. Hi. First of sell wares. Take this and take this. And this. Alrighty, so much for that. All of this is very good. I would also like to buy some sort of armor for a girl Karlak. Because she's still running around with a scale male that has no buffs, really. Even though, no. This is basically... This is almost the same thing as this. Stealthy. Gain a bonus to stealth checks. Astarion? Do you want... You definitely should. Yeah, you definitely should have that. There you go. Looks a bit off. But hey. Who am I to judge? Um, Light armor, medium armor. Takes less slashing damage. Yeah, you know what? We can afford it. Right now, we can afford it, so we are going to take it. Nice. Good stuff. Also looks a little bit more fitting. Sylvanas be Less with you. cloth pieces on there. And now, I would like to go down there. And, again. and do something that I didn't do right the first time. Right here. Right Right here. <gasps> Boop. This one. Hee <laughs> hee. Because I have heard... <laughs> Look at them! That they actually give us money. And I forgot about that the first time I did this. <laughs> awesome. Watch your back. Sir. <laughs> Being arrested for theft. <laughs> if you have a defense, make it now. Um, try to talk your way out of it. Since when is borrowing a crime? Please. This. Also this. Please. I was just trying, you know. We have to eat. They also have to eat, but we have They'd to eat more. Here. For now. <laughs> But something tells you they won't be so receptive to your charms again. Yeah, well, that went well. <laughs> wish to live in more interesting we have times. gold. One gold, two gold, three gold. Oh, oh, awesome. Oh, also, all the stuff that Auntie Ethel left behind. Mm-hmm. Guys, by the way, this is the point where we should end the episode. I think it's not going to get better. In the next one, we are going to talk to Korga and, no, yeah, sort please. that whole situation out. So, if you like this episode, please hit all the buttons. All the buttons. Every button. Except the downvote button. That would be rude. And you're not rude, are you? Uh, so, yeah. Have a wonderful rest of your day. And I'm going to see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.